this is Steve Walchuk with Nick's Service out of Emerald Park, Saskatchewan. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about how to set up a guidance on a uh, Vario terminal here. I'm sitting in a Fent tractor right now, but it's going to work the same whether you have a Gleaner or a uh, Challenger product. It has the Acu terminal, looks very similar to this. As far as the uh, guidance and the task controller, which we're going to be talking about a little bit today, uh, it's going to work very similar. So the easiest way to uh, get going here is uh, to first set up a field if you don't already have one and in order to find the information for the fields we'll go into our GPS menu here. Single press will bring up an overview, second press will bring up the menu itself. So in here uh, we will have uh, the fields, the implements, the GPS settings, um, uh, pardon me down here, and then the uh, steering settings, uh, the headland settings uh, for alarms as far as uh, how far away from the way uh, pardon me, from the headlands that we're going to alarm to let you know that the, uh, the headlands is coming up. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is we will create a field here. Uh, we will need to field first because the uh, information from the uh, way lines and the boundaries and the coverage is all tied to that field. Think of it like a folder in a folder in a computer. Um, so we have the field and then underneath that field we'll have the way lines, we'll have the coverage data, we'll have the boundaries, we'll have markers and obstacles. And all those things get saved to that field so that uh, it all sort of sits there. Uh, so that way we can pull off in individual information like the way lines and bring it into another machine or we can use those way lines over and over again while still being able to get rid of our coverage data from the previous uh, application, whatever it might be. So in order to uh, select the field, we'll uh, either select one of the pre-existing ones here um, or for today's example, we're going to create a new one and we'll give it a name here. So once we have a field selected, uh, the boundaries and way lines icons will uh, light up there. Uh, the boundaries we can record from the tractor or we can record from the implement itself uh, or delete a boundary. Um, today's example, we're going to be talking more so about way lines. Um, so a few different way line types. Uh, we have the standard AB, uh, which is great for those fields that aren't quite square to the world. Um, we also have uh, the A plus angle, so that's going to be probably the most popular option around here where we're able to set a uh, heading uh, specifically which way we want to be going. Uh, we have contour and adaptive contour, uh, they work very, mu very much so the same. Uh, one just works a little bit uh, more uh, advanced than the others in, in that it's able to uh, bring way lines together. Uh, contour is great if you have a uh, gentle slope that's probably the most efficient um, use of your um, way lines. For example, if you're following a creek line and you want to keep that uh, creek line going, uh, you could do that. Uh, pivot's going to be if you're going in a continuous circle, like if you had an irrigation system set up, and then we have manual input at the bottom there. And what that is for is if you have, uh, if you know your GPS coordinates, you can enter them uh, manually there. So since uh, A plus angles are our most popular option, uh, we're going to start with that. It's going to prompt you for your heading. It's going to come up with your current heading as the default, um, but we're just going to use uh, an example here. We're going to be heading west, uh, 270. And then the icon here will change uh, to an A instead of the wayline icon. Down here on the map, uh, it's nice to have the map in the corner here just uh, so you can see what's going on while you're setting your way lines. You'll see that thin red line popped up there. What that is, is it gives you a quick visual representation of which direction your way line is going to be heading. Now, it doesn't really matter if it's east, west, north, south. It just helps you line up that way line if you have existing coverage or it gives you an idea of which direction you're setting that line at uh, in case you get turned around in a field that you're not familiar with. So uh, we have the A icon down here. Uh, we also have the A icon up here. They both do the exact same thing. Um, so we'll hit that icon. It's gonna come up with our field. And then it's gonna come up with a default name of Wayline plus angle. Uh, you'll definitely wanna change that, especially if you are using multiple waylines in the same field, like if you had north, south, east, west line. Um, and you wanna just switch between the two. It's just for your identification purposes. So uh, this one is a west line. We will give it a name west. Then we have two options here. We can save that wayline and steer on it, and save that wayline and not steer on it, and then of course cancel. Um, but that is important to know uh, when you are setting waylines. Uh, so if you want to steer on that wayline right away, um, you will select that uh, st uh, first icon. If you wanted to set the wayline uh, because you want to start at a specific spot in the field, uh, but you were going to come back to it, you don't want to steer on that one quite yet, uh, you'll hit the save without steering. So we will, uh, for this example, hit the save with steering. 
So we're preset ready to go here. Uh, the reason we're not seeing any weight lines on the screen is because my steering valve is currently off. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on on the machine. That depends on which machine you're in. And uh, then you can see the uh, weight lines popped up here. I'm just going to make this full screen so it's a little bit easier to see. Gives you a plethora of information here. Um, we have the brown lines indicate which our, our way lines are here. The spacing is going to be dependent on the implement. Um, top right corner, or pardon me, top left corner of the screen here, uh, we have our GPS correction source and our signal strength. Center, uh, we have our uh, online uh, uh, drift, uh, for example, how far off the way line our uh, actual steering is. Just below that, the little brown zero indicates which swath number you're on. Uh, it'll go up. It'll either go up or go down depending on whether you're going left or right of that uh, that initial way line. Uh, give you a positive or negative number. Uh, the steering icon there has a red X through it. That means we cannot engage our auto steer right now. Uh, the reason for that is just below there. It's a little bit hard to see in the screen there, but it's because the tractor hasn't moved. We don't know which direction we're going here since we started this way line. Uh, we have the zoom here in the screen. Uh, we can zoom in, zoom out, uh, go 3D view, uh, depending on your preferences. Bottom left of the screen here, we have our um, kind of like a heads up display. Uh, we can change the information on that. Uh, right there is your average uh, working efficiency. So how many acres an hour we're able to do. Uh, by selecting that, we have a few different options here. And that's going to be dependent on what machine you have uh, as far as what you can see here. So, uh, for example, in the combines, uh, with, the, with the ideal combines, we're able to see um, our as applied maps um, as far as our uh, yield monitor coming in, how much yield and moisture we have in specific areas of the fields. Uh, this tractor, we just have the variable dock uh, worked area, remaining area, um, the um, onboard computer uh, worked area. So that information will be down there as well. Um, if you have uh, additional things like as applied maps, those will pop up in this section of the screen and it's the same thing to be switching between when you select the box and, and uh, select which one you want to see. Uh, and that'll be uh, totally dependent on the implement. If you have an ISO, uh, ISO compatible implement hooked up, um, it will bring in as applied maps. If it generates an as applied map, um, the combines, uh, with the ideal combines, we do have the uh, ISO bus yield monitor, yield monitor uh, so we have that ability in there. So when we have a uh, map pulled up here, uh, we have some icons on the right hand side of the screen. Now this might initially look different. Uh, so we have uh, our add section here. If we want to change what we want to see here, we'll hit this icon. So we have the uh, add uh, things to that. We have our map settings and then we have our map edit. So add is if you wanted to add a boundary, you want to add a different way line, you want to add an obstacle, you want to add any marker in the field. That's all. These two are sort of more so for your own personal referencing, um, but uh, we're going to touch on uh, adding in a second way line. See, we want we're right now on a west east west line. Uh, we're going to add in a north south line. So we're going to select our uh, way line. Go back to A plus angle, and this time we're going to go uh, 360. Just give us a north line here. As you can see, we have a quick visual there on the screen again to show us uh, which direction we're going to be uh, putting that line, which direction that line is going to be pointing. And the A button is right here next to the Wayline button. So we're going to mark it right here. We're going to change the name to north. That's the direction we're heading there. And then we're going to uh, save, but we're not going to steer on this line yet. So it's going to mark that line, it's going to save that line, uh, so that way line is in that screen waiting for us to use based uh, on this field. Now if I want to switch between those two lines, I will go into my map edit, and here we can see we have different way lines up in the top screen there, pardon the glare. Uh, so if we select that, we can choose which uh, way line we want to uh, steer on, we can change the name if we wanted to. Uh, we can delete specific way lines off of there if you didn't like one specifically or whatever the case may be. So right now we're on the west line, we're going to select our north line, and boom, our line's changed. And we can flip flop back and forth like that. The one thing to note is that icon will be grayed out if you are on auto steer. Uh, obviously for safety reasons, if we're doing uh, 20, you know, 12 mile an hour down the field, we don't want to all of a sudden try to snap a line that's 90 degrees to where our current uh, heading could cause some could cause some damage, could cause an accident. So uh, you do have to be steering manually if you're going to be uh, changing the wayline type. Uh, There's just a safety thing uh, built in to keep uh, keep you protected. 
And let's say um, I want to move my line a little bit here. Uh, we can we can do that right from the screen as well. This is the nudge button right here. This brings up our nudge bar. Um, so we can select how far we want to nudge here. Um, this is default to zero. Um, but uh, let's say we want to nudge one foot at a time. We can do that. We can nudge uh, left, nudge right, uh, and then uh, reset the way line to here. So you physically line up your tractor to where you want to be or your impl or your uh, combine to where you want it to be. You hit the nudge to here. It'll move all the way lines uh, in corresponding to where you are there. If you wanted to uh, go back to neutral for your nudge, if you didn't want to nudge anymore, you just hit the zero button. It'll bring you back to the zero total nudge. So it's as simple as that. Uh, we have a road mode, field mode button down here. That's what that's for. Uh, when then we have our map settings to take a look at here. Uh, the one that you're going to probably use the most is going to be the work area settings here. Uh, we can uh, automatically change the colors here depending on uh, the distance in between the way lines. We can have multiple colors painting. We can choose what color we want to paint first. It's going to alternate between green and uh, blue. So it's really up to your preference. So that's sort of the gist on how to uh, set up your map. Uh, we're just going to bring this down a uh, small screen here. Uh, and sort of symbiotically to that, uh, we have the task controller uh, built in here as well. So that's um, Task Doc, Doc Pro is what uh, it's called in this specific tractor. Uh, and what it is is essentially your job information. So it's going to record uh, your, your fuel usage, your death usage, your coverage, your work rate. It's going to log all that information, uh, any as applied information coming from the implement um, for your records if you choose to use those. Uh, the reason I like to use this is because it gives you a really good uh, indication as far as your work rate. It gives you uh, not only how much time we've already spent on here, but how much time is remaining based on our work rate. Uh, which is really handy how many acres you have left if you have a field acreage pre-populated. Say if we know our field is 100 acres or 160 acres, uh, we can pre-populate that so it'll give us a countdown how many acres we have left. Uh, really handy, especially at night. If you can't visually see how much acres you have uh, remaining, um, you can kind of give it, get a good, idea, good sense of when you're going to be finished that field. Uh, so again, same thing as the uh, any of the other menu uh, options here. Single press will bring up a overview. A second press will bring up the menu itself. Uh, we currently have no tasks selected, so uh, we can go in and uh, add a task. So since we have no tasks whatsoever in this uh, machine, uh, we can go ahead and add one. Uh, we are going to go with demo again, just to keep things all squared away. And we will select that task. So it'll automatically bring in specific things depending on what you have physically attached to the machine. So we always, in this case, we're in a tractor, we always know we're gonna have a tractor. Makes sense, right? Uh, if you had a ISO implement, it would automatically bring that in as well. If you wanted to, you could bring in your field information as well. So we can bring in demo field here. Uh, show zero acres on there because we didn't add any, any acres in uh, when we uh, brought that field in. We can also delete that guy off of here by selecting it. We can bring in other elements, the farm, uh, the customer, lots of information. This is all for your personal logging. Uh, device is going to be, um, for example, the large square balers that were attached to this tractor or whatever the case may be. It's going to be whatever you want to bring in as far as information uh, to help you log uh, more accurate information. So uh, just as an example, again, we're going to bring in our demo field. And then uh, we're basically ready to go here. Um, if once we are in the field and we actually want to uh, start recording data, we want to start logging information, or we want to start painting our maps as far as as applied maps, uh, we'll have to hit the record button. So from there, it grays out our demo field. We can't edit any information on there, and it's going to be recording data. So we're recording data, and uh, now what we want to do is we want to leave the field for some reason. Say we have to go fill up our sprayer, or we need to. Um, you know, fill up a spread box uh, or we're just going to go get fuel or we're, we're done that field. So what we want to first do is hit the pause button if we're going to leave the field that will allow us to come back and record once we're once we're uh, say filled up the sprayer or the spreader uh, and then we're, you can kind of carry on from there. Now if we want to finish the job uh, we'll hit this little save with the uh, check mark button. What that's going to do is it's going to bring up a summary of all the information we had logged in there, how far we were and how long it took us to do that job, uh, how many manual triggers or how many implement triggers were went on. So it kind of gives you a quick overview on the screen here as far as what you've uh, what you've done there. So 
Uh, we have a couple different options again at the bottom. We can uh, book this task and complete it, uh, which is kind of like uh, completing the job altogether. Uh, we can complete this job and then copy our settings for another job if we wanted to do another layer of application, um, or we can cancel. Uh, so for this example, we're gonna hit the green check mark. What that does is it books the task. And by book the task, I mean it says complete the task. So what it's going to do is we're not gonna be able to see that task here anymore. Uh, that is to pull it out of the operator's hands. So if you have an operator that uh, is running the, uh, the tractor for a farmer who uh, is very particular about uh, saving information, who really wants to do the precision farming uh, components of the, uh, of the unit, whether that be the combine, whether it be the sprayer, whether it be the tractor, it's removed there so that the information can't get muddled with other fields, tasks, whatever. And we cannot open that task data anymore here on the terminal. So in order to uh, get that task data off of there, we will go into the uh, task settings here. We currently have two book tasks. Uh, we can uh, export those tasks. And uh, the length of the export will depend on the amount of information on it. The more coverage, the bigger the field, that sort of thing, it will take a little bit longer. Since we didn't have a whole lot of information in there, it was pretty quick. Uh, we can also filter information based on what we had uh, installed there before, for example, by field. So I can bring up all of my field demo data and I can export that by itself. Uh, I can export that via USB device. It's going to be kind of our standard here. Bluetooth is pretty uh, short range. Uh, cellular is going to be used if we have the TaskDog Pro subscription through Agco. Uh, it will require a data subscription through a local data provider as well. Um, just so you can automatically, uh, you can automate that file transfer back and forth to your farm management software. Uh, now I want to delete all the information off of here. So we can delete uh, just the Vero doc related data. So all of our uh, recorded data, um, all of our task data, we can get rid of that. Or we can take everything off. We can delete all of our guidance data, all of our uh, way lines, all that sort of thing. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, just take care of our uh, Vero doc related data right now. Uh, it'll ask us to confirm, and it's going to go ahead and delete. And give you a check mark when it's successful. So now we have zero book tasks. So now the uh, basically the memory is uh, has been wiped out there. Um, the task data, since we exported it already, will still be there. It'll be waiting for us to put in a USB stick and remove it, um, and take it over to our farm management software, where we can kind of see a little bit more in detail, uh, depending on which uh, farm management software we use. So that's sort of how those two systems work. Uh, they do work together, um, so that uh, we can we can kind of pre-populate some different things here uh, depending on what we have for information and then we can kind of go from there so that's the that's the gist of how to use those two systems uh, together uh, if you have any questions uh, leave a comment below and if you found this video useful please give us a thumbs up thanks